I hadn't been in business before. All the money's coming our way and, you know, never would have even known how to do a budget or a cash flow budget. And, um, mm. yeah, we hit the wall because we spent too much and we, you know, driving expensive cars and living beyond our means. And, and uh, all of a sudden it come crashing down. And, and I said, look, uh, the business is uh, going to go into liquidation and we're going to lose everything. No one's ever lucky. I, mean, I think the only lucky you get in life is where you're born and then you make the rest. Stick around. It's going to be a good ride. Big day today, boys, for me. Big day for you? Fuck, dude. Mate, it's a big biggest... day for you every day. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm not even joking. I'm buzzing. I've got to tell you why. Why is so, that? Me little fella. It's playing on the G tonight. Oh. Playing in the, have you, did you ever do Little League or anything like that? Yeah, I played, yeah. Same, man. Come, but I, come down from Wang and played on there. Fair drive down from Wang. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of Maccas. No, but, but I did it as a kid and it's one of the best memories I've got. And um, my little fella started uh, Oz Kick this year. We never, like I don't watch a heap of footy, so he hasn't really been that influenced, but took him to Oz Kick and this kid will not put his footy down. Not even lying. When we got the email, went home and told him, he literally started crying, man. And he said, for real? Yeah, like, that's good for a kid. That's awesome. He was buzzed. He's like, me? Yeah. Like, on the on the big one, the real one? Yeah. Like, yeah, man. You're that's on, awesome. dude. So, yeah, he's buzzing. Well, fun, it's a big night. Bit of a different story. Um, life-changing, I reckon, for me, actually. Reading something on socials. Again, I love getting my information off social media. <laughs> oh, <it's a> good <laughs> it was an article. It was an article on uh, regrets of, so people on their deathbed, this nurse was asking them, and she's actually wrote, written a book about it, what their regret, regrets were in life. And I think like 90% of them all said they wish they didn't work as hard, which is strange oh. because we're all here preaching hard work, resilient, go for it. And then on your deathbed they go, they wish they didn't work harder, Jesus. which then leads into England are now going to a four-day week. Oh, What? Yeah. Like legit. Legit. What? Yeah, something we've sort Who of. Who told you that? Oh, it's just. Doesn't matter. He told me. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know if that's no, true. No, they're going to four day week. Really? Yeah, that's they're on trial. Yeah. That's probably something to it. Yeah, I think there's something to Be- it. People that have been there and done it. That's yeah. what they're saying. There's, a, there's a. I think Muhammad Ali's got a quote: "Work hard now, live like a king later." So I'm a big believer in that. Anyway, especially like for me, I've done it backwards, right? Like I was a late bloomer. Yeah. Had a, had a good decade after <laughs> sort of leaving school cool. of having fun. But I think now it's like, time to work for yeah, you. Now, yeah. Now I'm yeah I'm a little bit behind the eight ball playing catch up, but. I think the kids, the the message to the kids when they come out of school is that's the opportunity to give you, give 10, 10 hard years of work, set yourself up, and then um, you might find yourself with that balance. Or you're when you're young, you got no responsibilities. Do you travel and enjoy life as well? No, at that no, age. no, no. I think that's where I think, in my opinion, I think that's where it's all gone backwards, right? I because, think your opinion's wrong, though. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. But you got you're going backwards because then you go travel and then you come back and then when you're going to have kids and stuff, that's when you, you you're going to be working all this time. You're going to be taken away. And when you're traveling, you're traveling on the smell of an oily rag. Go and sat, make the sacrifice. That's, general, that's a generalization. You don't know that. Ah, well, you yeah. know, I'm from Bandura, man. We're running on <laughs> fucking oily rags. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So, but but does that, like, there's a little bit of truth there. It's horses for oh, horses. Everyone's horses. different. I did that. We traveled for early. I did and too. Got and, it, I and got it out of the system. And I lost a decade of my life, man. You know what I mean? So, But great memories. Yeah, true. So when you're on your deathbed, you're looking back, oh, geez, geez, I wish after school I just started working. Wish I didn't have those experiences and memories. Are you going to say that? No. Yeah. No, but I would have loved to have um, gone hard on, on you know, the business <laughs> side. And are you doing it now, though? The pockets are a bit deeper and then the travelling, These, you know what I mean? I understand that. I'll tell you what, today's guest boys knows a bit yeah. about working hard and living <laughs> like a king later. Yeah, yeah. fair oh, play. But should we get into it? Good segue, Pete. That's yeah, a good that's, segue. That's not bad. Pete. I had a little bit more in me, but we'll go straight to it. <laughs> oh, sorry, boys. Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> well, the segue was too strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, it was, that's a 350. There's a gimme. <laughs> this week's guest went into liquidation at 30. Benny, lesson in that. He went on to build and eventually sell one of the biggest commercial shop fitting companies the country has ever seen. He's an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, he's a technophobe, he's a connector, and he's a self proclaimed dumb tradie. <laughs> but without doubt, he's one of the smartest to have ever strapped on a nail bag, doesn't mind a flutter, and he's tanned all year round. That's that living like a king <laughs> yeah. bit, boys. Yeah, you tanned all year round. Well, you you live to... like a king, no, man. You're, you're not, you're not, not even in Melbourne cold when it's cold, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and without doubt, one of his greatest passions is his kids. He's the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Walkley, boys. Yeah. Yeah. You're beauty. Walkers. 
How are you, mate? And can I tell our guests? He knows a thing or two about, about living like a Is he your <laughs> is he a partner of your boys? Is he is he the boss? He's, he's, the boss he's, he's a business partner, he's the boss. So yeah. You, just, well, you boys are a bit off this morning. You're a bit rattled. <laughs> Mark, they're a bit rattled. They're a bit. Uh, that'd be right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> we've, got the, uh, we've got the chief in here, boys. Yeah, we yeah, wrangled him away from uh from all his holidaying and yeah. no, caught a, him while he was back in town. It's only taken us 30 episodes to get him scheduled. He's that busy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, I'm, always, I'm always working well on my way. <laughs> Straight off the bat, mate. You know, I'm with these boys all the time. Yeah. Give me the best and worst thing being partners with them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> heavy. He's going deep. Oh, look, Straight off the bat. This is for the audience. They want to know. No, no, I want look, to know. Oh, shit. Look, they're very, uh, very keen, very committed to uh, growing little fish and uh, great partners. But I've known them for a long time. They've worked in the shop fitting business I had and, you know, they've been uh, – Number one and number two in the industry, so Ooh. number two, very good. <laughs> now give me the worst. <laughs> uh, You're not getting out no, of the I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's, any, I think there's <laughs> anything bad. They're all, they're very good at what they do. So always things to no, work very, on. I'm very it's proud of them. Very on. proud of them. Yeah. Yeah, good for you, good blokes. Yeah, yeah. The boys yeah. are a bit relieved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wait, till, wait till the board meetings. That's, that's I'm when, a little rattled, man. I'm going to tell he's a bit rattled. Just relax. Ben, Benny was a bit slow when he was an apprentice. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's too, be, too busy on the computers, uh, mate, building websites. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks for coming on, Mark. You're a busy man. Appreciate your time. No, no worries. Great to be here. Uh, quickly, Mark, let's let's <clears throat> let's do a let's give the audience a snapshot of Mark Walkley. Growing up quickly, school life, you went and got an apprenticeship. You know, what was what was your upbringing like? Yeah, um, grew up in Reservoir, uh, one of four kids. Uh, my mum left my father when she, I was 13 and she went on to bring four of us up on a pension, uh, went to Kingsbury Tech, left in uh, Form 4, went on to uh, do a, uh, a job at a cabinet-making company in uh, Reservoir. Yep. It was my mum's cousin's place and uh, after eight months he sacked me. Yeah. So I've left school. What got you do sack, wrong? Got the, oh, I think I was pretty lazy. Bit, bit of a, <laughs> were you a bit like Benny or something? <laughs> <laughs> I think I had a fair bit of Benny in me those days. <laughs> oh, for the record, I was a gun. <laughs> anyway, I uh, got a bit of a shock and a shock to my system and I'm glad it happened early in my time because I got an opportunity to go into shop fitting and uh, did an apprenticeship. Uh, there for four years and um, did my apprenticeship fitting out target stores around Australia. Never been out of Victoria, never been on a plane. In my first two weeks of my first year apprenticeship, I was in Brisbane working seven days a week, uh, living away. So it was, uh, and I love the industry. Yeah, that's great. So serious, so very humble beginnings, um, but then just followed your nose. Yeah, oh, it was very humble beginnings, still very humble now. So, yeah. you know, it, the uh, the industry certainly looked after me, but um, yeah, I just I had a passion for it and I loved it. And and why do you think it looked after you though? Is it because of that passion and yeah, you know I, your, the work I, ethic that you built? Yeah, I, I think uh, you know I preach every day of my life with people is you know attitude and work ethic. You know it's probably eighty percent, and you can teach the rest. Yeah, you know so I yeah massive massive believer in that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I feel yeah. like you were sort of blazed a bit of a trail as well, Mark. Like you were before your time. You, you, like Pete said in the intro, ended up building and selling like Australia's largest, you know, commercial shop fitting company in the history of this country. And I feel like you, you were before your time because now, like, that's a big industry. There's a lot of shop fitting companies out yeah. there, and I feel like you blazed that trail. You were one of the few that blazed that trail. Yeah, I was very lucky uh, when I finished my apprenticeship. Uh, you know, we did work seven days a week doing target stores, but it was a bit of a uh, uh, not as dynamic a business as what the company I went to when I was 20, and that was PSC Shop Fitting in Reservoir again. And uh, they taught us how to fit out stores very quickly. So we'd go into a Suzanne's or Katie's on a Saturday at 12 o'clock, and in those days shopping centres closed at 12. Mm. And... Uh, so we'd go in 12 o'clock on a Saturday and by Monday morning, nine o'clock, they'd open up and they'd be completely fitted out. So PSC Shopping, Ray Payton and Lyle Crapper were certainly the people, the two guys that I still see today who I believe were the trailblazers. Yeah, right. They yeah. taught me that shops have to be open. And <laughs> I was lucky enough to work with a guy by the name Peter Grealish who, you know, operationally today is still probably one of the best shoppers I've come across in the in the country, and and he's still running a a very good company today, Australian Retail Projects up in Queensland. He's got a great partner in Ivan De, Ivan uh, Hand, who was Peter's apprentice. So we went on to when we sold, we had four hundred people, 
And I think we put that work ethic and, and that uh, experience into the guys we had. But my attitude to it is is, is uh, you go into to do a fit out or you go into do a, um, a, a house reno or rebuild, if you've got every piece of the jigsaw puzzle all organised, you don't have any downtime. So, you know, the, the 12 o'clock on a Saturday to 9 o'clock on a Sunday, on Monday morning, that's what shopping was about, and the retailer was open. So, is that is that finding a point of difference? You're in you're in the service business, shop fitting, and 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 these fellas you mentioned, they found the point of difference is like this is what my client needs, so this is what I'm this is what I'm going to do. It sounds like not everyone was doing it that way. Like you were known for speed, yeah, appreciate like what, and appreciating the 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 cost of, of what yeah. of what your client of needs. Yeah, so yeah, identifying yeah. that, going well, if we can do it there, they can open, they can sell sell, you know, they can do their retail business. But why why wasn't everyone else doing it, or or is they were just before their time? I'm, I'm just a bit lost, boys. I'm a bit lost. No, no. What story? Where's the story, <laughs> Marty? Hey, you blokes, these blokes are rattled by you. I'm telling you, I'm a bit lost in the story. Where where are we? We're talking about him starting a shop fitting company and having point of difference, and that's why he blew it up to sell so for seventy million. 70 million. So, so we'll get there, so Hollywood. So okay. what? So what happened was, so Mark, as we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have to dumb it down. <laughs> But what happened was, yeah, so we're trying to understand why Mark separated himself from the pack, right? Because if you go out there, even today, it's an oversaturated- Anything you do. It's a, no, but even in shop fitting today, it's a saturated market, man. You know yeah. what I mean? Because everyone's sort of, everyone's fast now. Yeah. They're all trying to they're all trying to be the fastest and build the relationships. But this is, we're going back 15 years ago, man. So it was mm. a different time. 100%. The world was a different place. And these guys, Mark and, uh, and, and, and uh, Peter, had figured out a way to uh, deliver something or package something up that hadn't been packaged up in that way before, which was appreciating. If you think about Chadston down Hollywood, how much do you think it costs to rent a store in Chadston? A day, let alone a week, a month, yeah. right? So yeah. every day that you're behind mm. is costing you money, right? So when Mark yeah. and that come in and go, you know what? You know how they said two weeks? We'll fucking do it in a week. That automatically, bottom line, not only saving the rent, but then they're selling product for that week as well. So it's a double whammy. So that's what these guys were able to figure out and the, the value they'll be able to bring that ended up building this business to, mate, we just said it before, $70 million it got sold for. And this is 15, 10, 15 years? No, it's uh, 16 years ago. 16 Benny. years ago. So you think about what, $70 million? 200. Years, yeah, 200, man. Like we're mm. talking some anyway, serious stuff. Two, yeah, look, at 35 years ago when we uh, started really – push the industry but as an example um, in 1987 we come across Just Jeans who at the time had 37 stores and uh, the guy was Craig Kimberley but the uh, the the project manager was Shane Young but he he heard a bit about us through uh, Scott Didier and Philip Ross and a few guys though he Shane was from Kmart come over to Just Jeans we got the opportunity to do the first one at uh, Knox City and um, where they were taking three weeks to do a fit out mm. We did the first one in six days. Right. Now, now that's money. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so then the retailer gets to open, and as Benny's saying today, like a store at Chadston, like a Just Jeans, they're probably you know five hundred thousand dollars a year rent. So every hour, every minute, every day they're so open. Ten thousand a day. Yeah, but, as, but as an example, did you just crunch that. But but as an example, when you're walking around a shopping centre, you might you might shop at Country Road. And you're down chats and you're walking through and there's a hoarding up. Mm. And you go there on a Saturday. Benny, as I know, you'd go shopping on a Saturday, you know, looking good <laughs> Saturday night. Uh, but, you know, you, you go to go into your country road store and mm. there's a hoarding up. And then you go, oh, well, I'll come back next week. And then you come back next week and the hoarding's up again. Uh, you might find uh, the country road competitor ah. and go there. So what's the cost of them losing Lifetime you? Value, oh, lifetime. Oh. So... The industry is all about that. I believe hoardings have got to be down. I think shops fronts have to be open. And what we did is we just got every jigsaw, piece of jigsaw puzzle, and we spent every minute of every day over 24 hours and made it work. And at the time I went on to be the president of the uh, Shopping Association in Australia, and it, and it was amazing because a few of the competitors were saying, well, how do you get you guys to do this? How do you get you guys to do that? How do you get your tr sub trades in at 3 o'clock in the morning? And I thought, well, my, while my competitors are asking me this, I'll tell them it's pretty hard. Mm. But for me, it wasn't that hard. We build a team around guys who can do. And do you ever question when the, 
the garbage guy comes and picks your garbage up at four o'clock in the morning. No, you don't. You don't think about it. Mm. They're just doing their job. So our job was to get the front the doors open. So that's what. Yeah, but did you right. believe you could do a shop that's supposed to take three weeks in a week? Well, we, did, we, 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 we it's a great theory. I think these but, days you call it a Gantt chart, but I we yeah, yeah. on a bit of fool's cap paper and <laughs> we just went through every hour Time of every day. <laughs> so, you know, once we once we mapped it out. Because um, I'm just thinking like, yeah, it sounds great. You've got the Gantt chart. We're working 24-7. I couldn't spell Gantt in those but days. But then you need the infantry to do it and you need to sell the story to them. Hey, I need you boys, I need you plumbers in at 3 a.m., to yeah. do this. Well that's, well, then, well, that's well, that's the culture that was was able was able to build there. Yeah. You build an army. You don't want to hell. Yeah, that's oh, what, you well, know. You got, you, the proof's in the pudding. You've got, you've got it's to the people. You've got to prove to them. And and you were in how do you prove to them? In like, those, well, in those days, we, was, we were maybe fitting out, you know, three stores a month. We went on to be building 110 stores a month around the world. Uh, so it was slow and steady. Yeah, but so, it was the people, Mark. Right? You got you brought the in the right people. It was only the right people. Yeah, yeah. That, and know, it was we, we were there, man. We were part of that yeah. that growth and that journey. And I'll just, give and you an just the right the right kind of beast that wanted to be seven days. Yeah, we were hungry, like, and yeah. we were we were we were me and Pete were apprentices back in those days, and the guys were above us. Everyone we were like linking arms, and everyone was everyone fighting. Was hungry. Everyone Saturday, wanted to Sunday, get it done. We knew what the goal was. We knew what our job was, and and you know we'd all link arms as boys and stuff, and we worked day and night, and we get it done. And then on the flip side of that, Mark being the boss, and and you know there was other bosses later down the track, but th- they looked after us as well. So Mark looked after the people that looked after him or the business looked after the people that looked after him, whether you're at the top or the bottom, you were never you were never wanting for whether it be uh, uniforms or tools. New or boots. New boots. Christmas or parties, flights, golf Christmas days, parts, Friday golf Arvos. Parties, whatever it was. The voice. They're, they're no longer being hosts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's to answer, no, but it's to answer your question how, right? And, yeah. and I've always said. And I was why, asking Mark too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because we've, we've tried to use that with our business now because we've looked at Mark, whether it was delivered or not that's what it was it was a culture that he built whether it was deliberate or not that 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 was able to deliver and on those crazy time frames and do stuff that other businesses couldn't man because everyone was bought in bought so, into so his how, how'd you build it yeah, yeah, uh, uh, thanks benny <laughs> I, I i think uh you know i've got a, a theory around the world in construction and and that is construction world is 80 percent reactive mm. so you know, there's 20% proactive and my reasoning behind that is, is uh, you know, you, you get a, a carpenter comes to your place and he's got to hang a door and he rolls up and he get, brings a door, then he puts a door there and then he goes down to Bunnings and buys uh, hinges. My attitude is, again, the jigsaw puzzle. If you're proactive, you have every piece ready before you start a project and then you go on and you put it all together. So, and it, I, it's not the fault of any tradesperson out there but my attitude is it's year 10 educated. Mm. So today, uh, which I love, the industry is getting more professional and the whole of the construction industry is getting more professional. I know we're going through hard times at the moment, but the educating of the person uh, today is is fantastic. Mm. And, you know, you go off and you do a uni course, you do project management. Engineers, you know, the, the best, some of the best CEOs around the world are engineers and they're process driven. But they're proactive, mm. so I think that's a big key. Yep. Whether you're laying bricks and you know you 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 want the brick layer tomorrow, and and you ring him two days beforehand, mm. you go, oh no, I'm flat out, flat out. And two days later, he goes home and he's hadn't got any work because mm. he's not so, thinking ahead. So you're a good project manager back early early days, probably when project managers weren't as big as now. Is that yeah, what you say? Look, I, I think so. I just think we we had a look at the the project and we just mapped it out. Mm. And 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 what I learned. From the days at PSC shop fitting, you know, it, it taught me everything. So mm. it wasn't, I didn't see it as that hard. I, I seen that as that was your industry. And I think today it's still the industry. But, mm. you know, there's 24 hours in a day. And I'm not saying get every, there's a lot of shop fitters go, oh, they just get a lot of people in on the site. But if you manage them per hour and bring the people in when they're supposed to be there, and if you're building a house or a reno, have everything ready. And have it lined up and forecasted out. Now, if you're running a business, you forecast out your revenue and your mm. expenses. Expenses. So you've got to do that with construction. Yeah, spot mm. on. I think that's key to it. Yeah, spot on. Hey, Mark. Early on, when you got into business, you got it. You got into business. You were doing shops, and it wasn't always smooth sailing. Can you take us to that that place where? You know, at thirty years of age, things weren't probably going as you planned, and yeah. things you know things got tough, and then you had someone that backed you as well. 
Yeah, we look, we started in 1984, so we've been going six years. We obviously put the, uh, the all the experience we had and we put into practice and we picked up some clients, but we were doing food courts in shopping centres, Mr Chicken's, Johnny's uh, Chinese shop. Uh, so we didn't have any major retailers. In 1987, we did pick up Just Jeans and, and that was a big key to us and Shane Young backed us in um, amazingly, but then, you know, we went on and, and uh, we learned um, we, we proved that we could do it all quick, but all, all of a sudden all come to us. I hadn't been in business before. All the money's coming our way and, you know, never would have even known how to do a budget or a cash flow budget. Sounds or familiar, doesn't it? Budget. <laughs> Sounds so, very familiar. So, you know, it is familiar, but and all of a sudden, you know, we're living off our cash flow. And mm. and so 1990 comes along and, and um, mm. yeah, we hit the wall because we spent too much and we – you know, driving expensive cars and living beyond our means, and, and uh, all of a sudden it come crashing down, and and uh, and I thought it, you know, it was I was thirty two at the time. I came home to Tracy. I was we were married, you know, probably four years. Had a house out in Eltham, and I said, look, uh, the business is uh, going to go into liquidation, and we're going to lose everything. Oh, um, shit. So it was a real, it was a real uh, bit of pill to swallow. And that that would have so, been a hard conversation was yeah that, well was it wasn't as, really uh, well it, was it i thought what well, i thought it was yeah uh but you know through psc at, at, at 24 years of age i had three rental houses because yeah. we earned big money as you guys know and uh so we had a beautiful home that was all on the line and we, and we lost it yeah. um but the day of liquidation i went down and uh picked up a check for uh from just jeans and it was just jeans ballarat and it was a sixty six thousand one hundred. And I and I ran into Craig Kimberley, who I didn't want to run into, as I was walking in the door. And he said, "What what's happened to you?" And I so said, he, well, "So he's the head said, of head of he owned Just, Just Jeans, the founder yeah. of Just Jeans." Yeah. Anyway, he he knew what had happened. He said, "Mark, you got to get going again, and you're going to do all our work." And and Shane backed that up, and and so we went on. And and it, my account at the time, Kevin Mead, we had no money. We had, but we had our hands. We had our tools, and mm. and Peter Grealish, and at the time, Ray Mead was a partner, who's unfortunately died he died of cancer about 10 years ago he was a, an amazing shop fitter um we we started again and and uh kevin mead said well i believe in uh craig kimberley i think you can be good at what you do but learn how to run a business and that that stuck with me till today and he threw me his checkbook and said use my checkbook until you don't need it mm. and our first job was uh q ladies fashions at uh, Northlands, and we you know, we started to not spend anything. Mm. We put everything away. We did the budgets. We did the cash flow budgets. And all of a sudden, the business was starting to move. So we ended up uh, spending 29100 of Kevin Mead's uh, bank account. That's all, you, that's all you needed. That's all, that's needed. all I needed. And But I had Just Jeans, Action World, Events Ladies Fashions and Q Ladies Fashions who said, Mark, you go again and we'll back you so yeah. what they did, they paid us on straight away as soon as we finished the shop. Yeah. And all of a sudden we had the cash flow. We we knew how to, you know, we knew how to be profitable, but we, you know, we had to learn how to not spend the money. Yeah. And and, and, I'm, and that's the Austral Asian company. That's the start of it right there. Yep. Can we yep. park that for a second? I just yep. want to rewind yep. just back to when you knew you are going to be liquidated, your company was going yep. under. Because yep. in all honesty, I think our industry – the construction industry is at a really tipping point. Yeah, I feel like we can almost. It feels like it's going to be a bit like the nineties in a year yep. or two, and I think we're going to have a big crash. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of people in that sort of. I hope not, but I think there will be a lot of companies going in that sort of area where they might have to liquidate. Yeah, how does someone? How do you get your ego? Because your ego drives you. Don't want to go under, and you yep. just want to keep fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. Where, when's when do you know the point is? You know what? I'm going to take my ego out of this. The right thing to do is to go into liquidation and then try and rebuild myself. Yeah. Try and explain to the audience that feeling, how to notice it and how to move on. Yeah, I think you've got to have a good hold on on um, all aspects of the financials of the business. I think debt is a word that pops up in these times. Mm. So, you know, when we, I said we're spending money driving fast cars, we, we didn't own them. Mm. So we, we, we had expenses. So... You know, when Littlefish started, I said to the boys, we have to run on the smell of an oily rag. And these guys, these guys didn't get paid for 12 months. Mm. So I think if you control your expenses and you don't have debt, um, then it, then 
it's okay. So all I could say to people out there is, you know, have a look at your financial your financials. Go through your accounting P and Ls and go from A to Z mm. and rub out every expense you can possibly run out. Rub out. That's great. Rub advice. it all out. Yeah, yeah that's great. Because you so, know what? You look at I look at all this. There's a lot of sub trades out there now. Driving the big utes, hotted up yeah, utes with yeah. the big trailer. There's a lot of money they're spending. Yeah. It's going to dry up. So We've got to be careful. You know, you know the greatest lesson there, though, I, I would argue, is no matter what happens, because <clears throat> like you said to your point, Dan, if there is going to be tough times ahead in whatever industry, it's not just going to be the construction industry yeah. if that's the way that it goes. The, the key lesson there is you'll take those lessons like Mark did and you don't give up and you go again, right? You figure it out and you go again. Like if you're truly passionate about what you do and you want to succeed, as they say all the time, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. Mm. It's about getting back up again. So it's about recognizing if you need to go into liquidation and then when you go into liquidation, you start plotting your way back mm. up again. But that's that, that that would have been pretty heavy at the time to, to hand in your fast car, yeah. hand in your nice yeah. house. Tell the living, wife. Living that life. You're 32 years of age, you, mm. you know, you're bulletproof. Then geez, what a what a reality shock! And then start at the bottom. Like we we went through it pretty quickly, but but that would have been hard. But a lot of a lot of people back in those days, you know, they they look at the banks and say, oh, you know, the banks let me down, blah blah mm. blah. The banks are business, yeah. you know. So if if you want to know who's at fault, you know, go home and have a look in the mirror. Mm. I looked in the mirror and I and I knew who was to blame. Mm. I knew it was me. So I thought, how am I going to fix this? And 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 I did fix it. I, I rang in my ears, learned how to run a business. So, you know, I, I knew how to fit out a shop. I, I knew how much it cost, but gee, I didn't. I didn't have control of the expenses or the, or the balance sheet. And and uh, so that's a pretty important thing. And and to harp on the expenses, I'm not, you know, just flippantly saying, look at your expenses. I'm looking in your drawer where there's HB pencils and you got four of them. Mm. Have two of them. Rub mm. that out. So if you go through and rub every possible expense out, it's amazing what you can pull out of your expenses mm. that will then fall to the bottom line. Mm. Well, does it count the cents, not the dollars? Look yeah, after the, the cents and the dollars, dollars will take care of yeah. themselves. Yeah. So like, I, I know you think you boys do it. You, why no longer get coffees on the on the business card? That's you just know, wasted money. It's, I'm, I'm, a massive believer. Yeah. I'm a massive believer. You've got a vehicle rolling along with pumped up tyres. If you pumped. buy a coffee... Mm. It's a little bit of air yeah. out of those tyres. It's not the business's fault. Mm. So if, if you're saying you've got a lot of mates, and you know, and we all have in the construction industry because, again, we year 10 educated. So I think the construction industry is getting a whack at the moment. But if they stop all the spending, they might be able to recover. And uh, Pete was telling me yesterday, one of the builders we're using out at Williamstown, he's gone from uh, three people down to himself. Mm. Well, he's actually – looking after that business. Mm. Now, he could put on those two people again in maybe a year or two when he really pulls it in and learns how to run it. Mm. Um, so he's been responsible in letting those two people go. People say, oh, listen, they don't want to lose a job. But if that guy's still around, he'll employ him again. Back, yeah. yeah. And that was when I heard, and that was probably 12, 12 months ago, like the media's grabbed hold of this now. Mm. But that was 12 months ago he identified that. And I thought, wow, like that's a guy that's prepared to make the hard decisions, yeah. have the yeah. hard conversations to protect his business, which which Smart. which made me feel warm because he's 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 mm -hmm. building a couple of our project. Well, right, right now, it's uh, for my time in business. I think there's people going to probably have to go into liquidation, but it hasn't been their fault. Now I say look in the mirror, but you know the industry and the, and the cost of uh, materials. And everything going, it's all going against it. The interest rate's going up. Now, a guy could be out there doing everything right, watching, watching everything yeah. financially in his business and still going to get caught out. Well, then to me, that guy's just got to restructure, um, pull everything apart, maybe go into liquidation, I'm not sure. But, you know, that, that person who started and he got there in the first place, he'll get there again. He'll go again. Yeah. You know, yeah. you say, well, what's it faster like? faster the second well, time? Well, I think well. it is a lot faster because you learn a lot more. Correct. And you're saying, you know, how was it for me to to lose the fast cars? I, I was the happiest man alive mm. in in the Ford Ute that cost me six thousand dollars that I owned. Because because you yeah. now appreciate I, what yeah. that Ford Ute represents. Well, I was, I <laughs> because you own it. I didn't have a monthly expenses <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was a rubber that I had to rub out. Mm. Yeah. And and I was so proud driving this Ford Ute it was, for the next ten years. I loved it. Mm. Loved it. Because you owned it. I owned it. So yeah, yeah. it's been like I, so I, I bought a twenty grand Ute. Years ago, and I was still running with it. People always, you know, you roll up the sites and go, why, why are you driving that? 
Yeah. Why not? Fantastic. It's a work ute. It's awesome. banged up. Who cares? Yeah. I don't need the flashy car. Mate. mate. Mm. Yeah. Keep that attitude and yeah. and don't hurt the vehicle. Keep the tyres pumped up and mm. the, ve- the the business will be all right, even though we are in hard times. One of the first lessons you told me and Pete Ma was – to yeah, like about learning how to run a business at X value sort of thing. Yeah. You, when we first um, sat down with you, we were you know pretty keen to move pretty quick, but you were sort of like, boys, slow down. You, you don't know how to run a ten million dollar business, so you can't run a twenty million or whatever the case yeah. may be. So yeah, it's spot on, and that and that sort of helped us, didn't it? Because we were sort of coming out of the the gates pretty hot. Well, you come out hot at that at, at that age, and probably similar to where you were at yeah, thirty, absolutely. going, "I buy yeah. this, I buy that, yeah, I buy that." Dro- drives yeah, the car, yeah. and then and then when the when the headwind comes, you're you're fully exposed. Yeah. Mm. I remember you used to say as well, "You haven't experienced hard times yet, boys." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> hard times are coming, I think. They're coming. But, you know, but you, that's you, all part of it. You need to be. Able, you used to say this as well, Mark. I could quote you all day, but you need to be able to make <laughs> money in good markets and bad markets, right? You can't just be a company that's Correct. set up that when uh, when the going's going good, yeah, you, you're, yeah. you're going good. You've got to mm. be robust, and and then these are the lessons that we've sort of taken and implemented. And we feel like you know, it was hard times. We're kind of in construction as well with what we're doing, and we feel like we're. We're going to be okay. Well, you just got to you just got to navigate as well. But yeah. all these tools, it's all those lessons. your budgets, your forecasts, your cash flows allow you to allow, allow you to plot your way out or make decisions and go. Well, boys, we're starting to get light here. Well, what are some decisions we need to make on in this part of it to bring the expenses yeah. down so we can be that type of business now rather than rather than running and running and uh, driving the fast cars and then and then oh shit, fuck that, mm. that didn't work. Yeah, like we, <laughs> so we got to watch it. We sit down once a month and and you know we started this you know budget when the business first started, it was say four or five years ago. And, and all we do is look at this one sheet of paper. We, we change it a bit, but but that's what we've got to go by. And, and our meetings go for about 20 minutes because we read straight to the budget and we look at the expenses. What have you spent? As long as we're in line with the expenses, in line with the revenue, you know, we know what the bottom line's going to be. But if there's, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, I said, you know, how come we're up by $500? And Benning said, well, I, I meant to tell you we bought a coffee machine. I said, well, it's not in the budget, Benny. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, it's yeah, dead yeah. true. And, 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 and they're the lessons you've got to learn. Mm. Buying a coffee, coffee machine. Mm. Now, it's okay if you know about it, and, and, and we did, and we, we put it in, but but that's how disciplined you've got to be. Spot on. It's only as good as how, how, how much you respect knows. it and you use it, 100%. I'm thinking our audience might be a little bit confused on what business is talking about. So this is the business that you three guys are in together. Yes. Yeah, so that's, we're just, you, you three know the story. Yep. And I'm a bit lost as well. Yeah, so that's so, the development company. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Can we unpark the your the, the big business is where I want to go back to. We yeah. parked. Let's go back there. So um, Australasia, you got a check from the boss of Just Jeans, an open book check. No, from his account. No, from his, from account. his accountant. But ah. but but the boss of Just Jeans backed him in with all his work. He, he just said, look, if you could go. So your get accountant him. said, here's an open check book. He said, I want I'm, you to go again with your I, business. I believe in you, and uh, yep. So. You know, some, you've got to have someone who believes in you and, and the banks wouldn't give me any money and neither they should. My, my, my form, you know, my, my <laughs> stats sheet read that I didn't get any kicks. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, if, if I was a bank, I would give twos. it to me. Yeah, the the, the Magoos <laughs> running the water. And I remember Tracy, you said, great, we'll go we'll, we'll go away for a couple of years and we'll travel. And yes. I'm thinking, travel? Well, I haven't got any money. But see, I'll put your nail bag back on and, and we can do it. And, and that was her attitude and it was great, great to have that backing that there was no pressure there. But it was just get back in and doing what we we're doing. Yeah. How does a thirty-two year old take that on? You've just been belted by by the world. You've been in liquidation. Then you've had a guy come in and back you like that. Here's an open checkbook. Go again. Yeah. I, I yeah. still I still rave about him today. Yeah. He still you know that's in, that's a that's a that's a pivotal moment in your story. Door. Sliding Absolutely. door moment right there. One hundred percent. You know, I've I've got a, another business that we've got uh, watch shops with an old client, and Kevin who's probably 74 now, he still does our figures once a month for the watch shops and that. And that where the, I'm the only client he's got, he's, he retired 15 years ago, but I can't let go of him and he's the one who gave me his checkbook. Wow. Mm. So, Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So he still, he still thinks I spent too much for this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you only spent 29 grand out of that checkbook to yeah. run a business. Yeah, well, that's, to, and you run the business to 70 mil. Yeah, but that's a lesson you have to learn. So, Mark, we've gone – to where it went bad, like Dan said, and we got yep. back on the horse. Love to hear about the day 
Let's you, get to the good yeah, bit. Let's get to the good bit, man. What about the day when I guess you were approached by you know take us through the story of how building you were, building you were, the company. Yeah, building the company, but then when it sold, you know how how that you you always say make sure your business is fit and ready, and that's a lesson that we sort of talk to a lot of people on the pod what, about. What does that mean? Have your business fit and ready? This, well, I think it's exactly what we're talking about: understanding all the financials, understanding all the expenditure. So I actually took that to the nth degree and. That was in uh, 1990. In 2002, uh, I was approached by Steve Vizard, who was setting up a small uh, private equity uh, group funding, and he uh, approached me about selling the business. and uh, And I, uh, I was quite amazed, but and I, I definitely wasn't for sale. But I went through a, a procedure with him for three day, three months, and and it took three months to get uh, our financials to him to the right dollar and uh, after I went through, he still offered us uh, 20 million at the time and, um, but he said, Mark, you know, you, your finances have got to get, you got to get quicker with them and, and Kevin and I used to do it with HP Pencil. <laughs> uh, so we, we changed that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, well, not unfortunately, we, we didn't go with Steve and I kept going and, and uh, we, I put on a, an engineer and another, I put on two engineers in 2002 and our, um, at the time, uh, 80% of shop fitting companies around the world turn over less than 10 million. So it's a cottage industry. Mm. So our clients were taking us beyond that. So we had to be, we had to be really ready. So can we ask what you were turning over? Uh, at the Roughly. time we we'll turned over, uh, 18 million in 2002. Mm. We sold in 2006 with a turnover at 82 million. Oof. <laughs> but, uh, but what I what we did is uh, we we employed two guys who were both engineers, and I asked uh, Pino when I was sitting with him in my office. He wanted to go and see the clients straight away, and I said, "Mate, I've got to get these fools cap folders off my desk, and I've got to get everything uh, off the desk onto a computer screen." I said, "So for the next twelve months, we're going to work together with everything, all your skills and what's in my head, mm. and get onto a computer screen." Um, so we did. And we uh, went online at the time and everything, you know, plans were online, traders went there online. Anyway, so we built it and our clients took us to 82 million. We didn't have any more clients, but Just Jeans got bigger, Cotton On got bigger, Reese got bigger, Medibank. Mm. So um, all of a sudden there was a few people knew about us and I've always done some training with a group of mates. You've had him on, I think, Scott did you, and a, there's probably half, half a dozen guys. We trained under Barry Mitchell at Carlton Footy, mm. around at 6.30 in the morning. We did three days a week. And there was a guy who was uh, from Horwitz, and he ran with us as well. And we were running one day, and he said, uh, how's business? I said, yeah, good, blah, 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 blah. I was very open with, with figures with him because I knew, you know, uh, he understood. Uh, and he said to me, would you sell? And I said, no, I'm not, no, 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 I'm not selling. You turn it over yeah. 82 mil. Why would yeah, you want to sell? You know, we're, <laughs> we're on our merry Back way. Back in the fast cars. Yeah. We're, on, we're on our merry way. And, um, you know, he he said, look, the industry at the moment in 2006, there's private equity out there. They want good businesses. I think I can sell it. And I said, well, I'm just not for sale. He said, well, on what you're telling me, I reckon, you know, I could probably get you 60 million for the business. I thought, gee. <clears throat> No. Maybe it is. So, hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> well, but I, but I had, but I had, uh, you know, guys in there who worked with me a long time. Peter Grealish's, uh, Ivan Hans, and Tommy O'Connor's. There was groups there that you know they'd become uh, incentivized with shares. Mm. So it wasn't all about me, but um, so. But I thought, you know, I'll have to. I've got to consider it. But I didn't want to tell anyone. Mm. I didn't tell my wife. Didn't tell my accountant. Didn't tell anyone. Uh, but I went through the the uh, uh, the exercise with him. And once I looked at my figures, I I decided, no, 60 is probably not quite right. Uh, I think if we keep going the way we're going, the business on what you're telling me could be worth 75 next year. He said, well, we can look at that. And uh, three months later, we had three uh, private equity companies look at us. They all put in their bids and, and A&P bought it. And was it was it was it seventy? Seventy five. Right? Seventy five. Yeah. Oh, dropped off five. Yeah, seventy five yeah. mil. That's it. Wow. In, yeah. in sixteen years ago. But the, but the shareholders uh, also stayed in for thirty percent. So A and P were seventy percent. Yeah. So uh, we stayed on board, and you know we're going to take it bigger and bigger. And uh, but you know it uh, unfortunately uh, the GFC came along, so we went up to one hundred forty million. 
Um, so your projections were right. You said projections it. were right. Yeah, and and then we the the industry hit bad times. Well, the the GFC hit, and and it got a bit hard. And yeah, so but uh, we we got paid on the day, and and everyone was in there keen. You know, I was only I was only going to board meetings at the time, but. Uh, yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience to go through. Take us, take us back to that sort of couple of weeks, you know, when it was building up. I think did you have to fly into state to 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 meet with these heads of these companies and 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 negotiate that deal that ultimately come to Man, how you, how come you to, kept it from trace come to loss. No, well, by the time uh, you know when it come to about two weeks from settlement, uh, they said to me, well, "What are you going to do?" And I said, "Well, I'm not sure I'm going to sell." So and, you still uh, weren't sure. And, no, and and, and uh, has a figure seventy five mil been thrown around yet? Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, wow. Yeah. And you still weren't going to sell. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you know, I, by that time, my accountant knew my, you know, Peter Grealish and a couple others knew, and and uh, and so I went home and told Tracy about it, and uh, she said, well, you know, what are you going to do? And I said, I, I'm, I'm not sure. She goes, you're not sure. <laughs> And, and was was Tracy? Sure? No, she no, she no. she was my decision, and yeah, and uh, you know, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and and thought, you know, we what ego have you got to think that you get you could look after a couple of generations of your family? Yeah, uh, you know, and I woke up, you know, wide awake, and I've got I've got to sell. Yeah, yeah. and so I, I rang AMP the next morning, said, you know, it's sold. Wow. So, uh, was your ego saying not sell? Maybe. Well, I just is I, it because you built this? You, you failed at the start. Another yeah. business. Then yeah. you built this thing that's worth seventy five yeah. mil. It becomes yeah. part of your identity yeah, as well, cool. right? Like and, Mark yeah. Walkley, the shop, shop fitter, Australasian. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, oh, the end of the day, you can the industry, see how you wouldn't at sell. The end of, at the end of the day, we had great clients, and and I I, I was loving it. I was forty eight years of age, so I really I look and I don't think you know I, I know we're going on about selling whatever, but but it's not all about selling businesses. It's about you know looking after them and getting to to, to get the best of, you know end result and. And I don't know when the end result is, but but just keep running it properly, and and we we're having good times. We we're having we we're enjoying ourselves. Yeah, and that's why you stayed yeah, on. So that's, that's yeah, so yeah, yeah, I stayed great. on, and yeah. But uh, anyway, it, it was a it was a good result. It's a fantastic uh, result. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> better allowed good. me to. You well, know. What do you what do you? Do? I'm just trying. What, what what do you do when the money lands? <laughs> no, when talk the, us the money comes into the bank. Okay, yeah. it's settled. Was it wide? Was it seventy five or whatever it comes <laughs> into I think, the bank? I think I think I said to Kevin at the time. I said, take these checks. And I don't want to see him for three months. I need to calm down. So, oh, really? so, was it, so it was a check. So it wasn't a what back yeah. then it was a check, it wasn't a wire. Yeah. So Wouldn't you're lose holding a check, a check with yeah. yep. fucking well, so you know, eight, was, eight numbers. Is it, is no, it a suitcase? I was, I, was a, I, was a, I was a part of the shareholding at the time. Yep. So yeah. Was it in a suitcase? Yeah. Well, so, you, you're not going to run around town with a seventy five million dollar check. <laughs> no, no, there was certainly a lot of a lot of split ups from the check. Yeah, obviously, yeah. With yeah, the shareholders and everyone had their part, but yeah. A lot of money. Look, yeah, I mean were the day the check came, Mark? Can you tell us what happened that day? Were you with Tracy? Did you go no, for no, dinner? No, we, we, no, no. We we had a uh, settlement dinner at the Flower Drum, and <laughs> and we uh, we had Arnold Block Lieber were our uh, solicitors. So we were in uh, at settlement at twelve o'clock, and there was something like thirty solicitors in the room. There's bankers, solicitors. So it's not over until it's over. So uh, all the That's signing of the signing of the documents finished at about. You know, six thirty that night. Perfect. And, it took uh, perfect uh, timing. It took so hang on. It, <laughs> yeah. it took that long to get yeah. through Bring all the, the settlement. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. something you don't think of when you're going in to sign a sell. Yeah. That you got yeah. thirty solicitors in there taking six hours to do it. But how's well, the anxiety, surely, man? Yeah. Of thinking like, because you, you well, just it might said, not happen. It might exactly. Happen, but, but, they say you know, deal's not a deal until it's a deal, right? But at, but at the end of the were day, were there times where it wasn't going to be a deal in that meeting? Oh. Uh, well, you'd never know until it's over. Hey, swing there. We're, we're, not, we're not going next week. Cancel 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 No, we went with the A&P guys. We went with all the partners and we went with the the solicitors. And we, it was, so it was, so was everyone together. It was a settlement dinner. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, but, you know, the, the option two was also good to keep going. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. True. So, so, so was it more you, Mark, in the meeting going, am I doing the right thing? No, 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 no. I think it, I think it you, was. You were uh, comfortable with that. I think you had to be in comfortable. the meeting, man, he's like, and, where's me dough? And, but no, no, <laughs> no. But at that time, you know, we had a we had a great partner in A&P and we wanted to build, we wanted to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I was still very much part of it. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I, 20 minutes ago, we spoke about walking in to your, you know, to Tracy saying we've gone into liquidation, you know, having yeah, yeah. that hard conversation and then, now, twenty minutes on, we're talking about the conversation of saying, I've "Got this offer, I'm going to sell." Generational like, wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's yeah. um, that was, a, lot, a lot's happened in between that, but yeah. they're too. too it was big. very satisfying. 
Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Anyway, I think we move on from the money and the. <laughs> no, it's a part we like. Oh, yeah, we everyone, like. everyone out there is tr- we're all trying to build a business, and that's yeah. I know you don't like talking about. It. They're, yeah. they're the moments. Humble, they're humble the moments man. they're dreaming of. Because yeah. I do have I one more question. I have but, one but, but, question. Keep, but keep building that successful business. Yeah, keep those ties. It's bumping. never over. Never over. Retirement. Not yeah. really. Not really. Probably what you <laughs> thought it would be. Would you? <laughs> no. Well, look, look. I'm still involved in a couple of businesses, but look, you know, with you guys and 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 the uh, watch shops and a couple others. You know, I go to meetings once a month and it's very satisfying. But I'm, you know, I'm 64 years of age. I should be retired. Can you tell us about the watch shops, Mark? So that's a different, the other side of retail, right? So you were on the retail, you were in retail, but you were doing the retail fit outs and stuff. Yeah. And now you've found yourself owning um, a, a shop, a watch franchise. Yeah. So can you tell us, tell us how that came about and what that sort of looks like as a business or how different that is compared to a service based business? Yeah, I've got a, a, a partner who's been a client of mine for 30 years and he had clients jewelry and, and uh, he come to me one day and, and said, you know, I, I want, you know, unfortunately he made a wrong decision and didn't sell and, and, uh, and he was offered, uh, a lot of money to sell and he, he didn't sell. So, uh, the, the industry at the time, you know, clients jewelry, Diva, was coming into the country and, and Greg was offered a very sizable check to get out and he said, no, I'm going to take him on and, mm-hmm. and he took him on and it didn't end that well. But he, uh, so he had to start again and he, he asked me about being a, a bit of a backer for the, for a, a watch shop at Essendon Direct Factory Outlets. Oh, DFO, yeah. And he, and he had, but he came to me with the, with the budgets and all. he had, he was very organised, very focused, and is a brilliant retailer. So, so now, so now you're the guy with the checkbook. Yeah. Sort of. yeah no, yeah. well, no, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, well, I, I, a little bit, I, a little I, bit different, but I signed, I signed the bottom line, and and but you backed but, him. Yeah, but but he it was easy horse to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. ten to one on. Sounds like you yeah. were too, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, he was ten to one on on yeah. the day, <laughs> and a few people said, <laughs> All you, know, in. you know, a few people said to me, even even Kevin, he didn't know Greg that well, and he said, you know, do you think you should be backing a guy? Like this, and I said, "Well, I'll tell you what. He, he's he hasn't lost his ability to be yeah. one of the best retailers out there. And twelve years later, it's proven. So we did the we did the well, Greg, Kevin, Greg did the figures on one shop, and I th- we got twelve now, and 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 it's it, it it's it's quite successful, but it's very low key. Uh, again, we go through the budgets and the, and uh, the, the expenses every month, and it's very controlled. Mm. So I backed a very good horse." Yeah. Mm. Uh, so again, I'm I'm lucky enough to not put in much time there. Greg and I talk a lot. Unfortunately, uh, we use shop fitters today to fit our shops out. And I hate shop fitters; <laughs> they cost too much money. <laughs> <laughs> Shoes on yeah. the other foot. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, but it's expensive to fit out the shop. <laughs> it is. But uh, so he, look, he's a great great partner and and does an amazing job. And he's, he's, he's a very massive workaholic. Yeah. And uh, very detailed, down to the cent. And Kevin, you know, as I said before, my seventy-four-year-old accountant, he he, they get on like a house on fire because he knows the value of every cent spent. Yeah. So, sounds so that, like sounds like you're in the business of getting in the business with good partners. Well, I think you got to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you boys your running. Run. You got watches over there. What watches are you boys uh, running? Apparently, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's in the mail. <laughs> 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 the business can't afford to give them away, Ben. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keeping the tyres pumped up, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. 100%. So, Mark, so so retirement's not not that quiet for yourself. You're, you've got a couple of interests, a couple of businesses yeah. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But do you think you, you'll just do that for, Oh, yeah, forever, I, I, love, I know, love what like, I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. You know, I've got a lot of free time. You know, Harry's 21, me is 23. Me is still at home with us. And, these uh, your kids? Yep. yep. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we, and we do go away. We go away for the, the three months of the Melbourne winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like uh, you would, yeah. Hence, I've you know just got back from Darwin, so I'm a little bit brown. <laughs> you, you just went on a cruise, yeah? yeah How was yeah, that? Yeah, <laughs> that's a story. Well, well, it wasn't that good because I was great. We went with a, a, another great mate and and, and partner and a uh, ten day cruise from Darwin to Broome and. And someone got positive on the first day and the whole boat was tested on the second day and mm. we're locked up in a cabin because Tracy tested positive <laughs> and we're locked up for 84% of the cruise. It's not a cheap, <laughs> but, not uh, a cheap cruise, that one too. I know, well, I, know I, the one. I, I actually spoke to the uh, Silver Seas about being in the cabin for 84% of the mm. cruise, so they refunded 84% mm. of the money. Did they really? Yeah. That's so that was, that's Anyway, I mean, yeah. we, we were lucky we had a balcony. We laid on the balcony reading books and no, it, was, it, was, it was fine. We were away for a month and we had mm. great weather and – 
blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. but they're the things that we love. We love going away and we love, you know, coming home now. You know, Mia's still being home with us and Harry finished his degree in two weeks' time, so he's done. He's done that hey. pretty quick too, hasn't he? I feel like that was in and out, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, he, 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 he's a weapon. He, he, he took off and went to Bond Uni in, right. in got it sorted, Gold Coast he? and got it sorted, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, enjoying life. Awesome. Enjoying life. But, yeah, you still managed to get on the phone and – Bloody. I do. I do drive you mad. Carry on. Bust out balls. Said, this guy's on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Still at us. No, no, <laughs> no, it's all good. How's the sales going, boys? <laughs> <laughs> How's that bottom line? Uh, Mark, so have you got a piece of advice? Like, there was a lot of gold in there. Have you got a piece of advice for the for the listeners? Um, they're starting their own businesses, um, whatever part of the journey they're in. What 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 advice would you give them that they should? implement or they should seriously think about? Uh, I think to get into business at the start, I think you've got to have passion and most people have and they're going to be good at what they do. So keep the passion going. Uh, Certainly be very diligent in your figures but, you know, look after people. You know, your your people are the most important part. A lot of people talk (coughs) it, they don't walk it. Mm. But I can tell you, you know, um, people are the most important. And the people who just want to talk it, I don't really respect that well. Yeah. I'm very lucky to have a, a few mates who are very good in business and, and they really walk it. And, and the rest takes care of itself. So if you look after the people who are working for you, they'll look after you. If you want to try and play around it and, and, you know, you say you're doing it, but you get caught out. You're not going to hold people, you know, staff retention in businesses to me is when I'm looking at a business, that's got to, they've got to tick that box. Yeah. So, you know, and I know these days it's a bit different to what, what we came through, but, you know, we, we really wanted to stay in, in the one job for a long time. I've got no issue with the younger generation today moving around and, 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 and they, they know what they want, but they're well educated. And mm. and if they're not getting looked after, you know what? Good mm. on them, go. Yeah. But but if you're if you've got one of those and you don't want to walk the talk, well, you don't deserve to have them. Yeah. So I really, you know, it's it's, it's all about the people's you know, game. Keep, keep the passion. Watch the numbers. Numbers. And and be very very massively be great with your staff and have build a culture that that's never going to be beaten. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's a destination company. People want to work there. Yeah. People want to stay there. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Did you get the notepad out there, Benny? No, no. I, I know. <laughs> that's, 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 you know. All these years ago, we, years later, we still talk about that culture that Mark built at Australasian. And Dan, yeah. you know, you came along later in the journey, but we worked as shop fitters together and you would hear stories from back in mm. those days and not necessarily from, just from me and Pete. Like it was, there was a lot of boys working there and it was, it was a destination company. And like I said, whether it was deliberate or not, that's what it was. And to your point, it was because you look, he looked after the people and then the people looked after him. And that's, mm. that, and, that was a big part of the success. And the people in the industry, like, can you, Res- can you get us in? Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. get us a gig in? Yeah. There? there was only one way in and you needed to know someone, you know, <laughs> which, 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 <laughs> which is true, right? I knew, you knew yeah. my dad and yeah. my brother. Yeah. I think it's only way. Yeah. There yeah, was connection dad, there yeah, for there sure. Was connection, so. And that's, and, and I think that's a good way to get, to, to get good people, but, that's a sign of a company that doesn't need to put ads on seek, doesn't yeah, need yeah. to, oh, we're hiring, you know, because yeah. when you need people, everyone knows someone and they're keen to jump or to stop whatever they're doing and come and come get, get a Guernsey it. come get a Guernsey over here. I think your best recruiters are your staff. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And 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 they'll also tell their mates that the place is no good either. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I oh, at, they'll be honest, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm still lucky enough to be involved with the boys up in Queensland with Australasian Retail Projects and and we've got a board meeting next Friday, but uh, the boys were telling me last week in Darwin that they were fitting out a store down in Geelong for Shane Davey, who is the main guy from Specsavers, and the yeah. boys have been doing their work for over 20 years. So I was talking to the foreman on site and he said, you know, Shane Davey rolled up and there was about 20 guys on site and, they, were, you know, they work long and hard as they do in the game and they, you know, they, when he walked in, he, he walked around and thanked them all mm. and, and and what he did, he just walked out of the store and they didn't see where he went. He went down to the local uh, bottle shop and bought $25, $50 gift vouchers yeah, and yeah. come back and gave it to them all. Mm. Now, it's not all about money. 
you know, you've got to show that you care about people. Mm, yeah. That guy cares. Yeah. Yeah. So these guys, you know, they, they walk 10 foot taller. Mm, yeah. yeah. And, but he, he didn't just, he just played his natural game. Yeah. yeah he's a good officer. He went in there yeah. and he looked after the guys. He was appreciative of them. Yeah. And, I, you know, the days at the Ron Barassi coaching, they're gone these days yeah, and they shouldn't, the and they shouldn't be yeah, You know, what, what I want to do in business is educate people. Mm. And if, if you're, if you know, a lot of people talk to me about, oh, you know, um, oh, that guy's no good. I said, well, you know what, you've been talking about that for six months. Why is he still here? I, I'd be looking at you as a coach. You're no good as a coach. Yeah. yeah. That guy could have been good mm. if you had educated him properly or that yeah. lady. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's about, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a care factor. Mm. Yeah. It's a care factor. Cause that's the thing. Yeah. There was probably two pieces to that. And Shane Davey, he's the client. So he's yeah. not, he's not, he's not the builder. So yeah. it's your client coming along, identifying that your builder's going to war for you and saying, hey, and, and not just throwing money at them and show, th throwing the vouchers. He first went and shook all Thanked their them. hands, yeah. looked them in the eye and said, really appreciate Thank what you're you. doing. And, that, and then that's he backed the it up with that. Nothing. Exactly, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. free, right? It's mm. free yeah. to be and grateful probably, and say thank it, you. It probably hits home even, even harder than the voucher. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, the guy that I'm the, doing it for cares. Well, think about it like this. He sends the vouchers back with someone and say, go give all the boys a voucher yeah. each. Like, how much impact is that going to have compared to him coming in and shaking your hand and, and, and showing some gratitude and appreciation yeah. Good changes, changes the game. Does, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And people forget that, right? Because what happens, and we we can get guilty as sometimes, we know that because knowing it doesn't mean you've got it all figured out because you can get stuck in the weeds. Mm. You can get stuck working, the pressure and all the things coming and then things start to slip off. And naturally you can forget about your employees or you can forget, you know, you can be that moving that quick. You're not saying thank you or showing gratitude or being grateful or giving feedback or whatever so it is yeah it's an important thing that can be easily slipped by the wayside so yeah easily missed advice. but easily but easily done and means mm. means a lot yeah Love i think it. it's a, it's it's a figure of who you are yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. this has been amazing boys yeah, are you awesome. you done with the queries boys are we <laughs> We My heart rate, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm you good. boys can ask, are you going to ask for a pay rise? <laughs> <laughs> can they get a pay rise? I reckon they should give me yeah. one. <laughs> do, do you bring some vouchers in from the bottle? Yeah. Watch. <laughs> a little watch. Yeah. We could we could talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about that off air. Please, guys, anyone who's going to get value out of that, please share it with them. Any budding business men or women, entrepreneurs, so many lessons. Like, Absolutely. share, subscribe. See you at the top. See you at the top. Woo! Woo!